Hello, and welcome to Objectively Speaking. My name is Zach Zetterberg, and I am the curator of art here at the Peoria Riverfront Museum. And today I'd like to show you three exceptional slipware uh, dishes from the collection of Randy and Nancy Root. All three of these dishes were created in the late 18th century in Staffordshire, England. And from the 17th century to the 19th century, Staffordshire was a major center for slipware production in England. Cultures across the world have been producing slipware since ancient times. Slip decoration can be found on ancient Greek vessels and ancient Chinese pottery, all of which date back thousands of years ago. Slipware is a form of decorative earthenware that is perhaps the oldest and most vibrant of the English folk art pottery traditions. It was a staple product of potters living in and around Staffordshire, England for close to three centuries and was used by the masses. At the time, slipware was primarily made for use in kitchens and dining rooms of poor and middle-class families, although the technique was also used on luxury wares. These utilitarian forms were widely exported to America and helped establish the standard from which early American pottery took shape. Slip is a slurry of clay, water, and coloring additives that is applied to the dried clay before it is glazed and fired. The term slipware is used when identifying pottery that uses slips as the primary decorating process. The slip is often dripped or piped onto the surface and sometimes combed to produce subtle designs and patterns. English slipware is celebrated today for its historical significance and aesthetic beauty. Although slip has been used for thousands of years, the techniques used are still being used today by contemporary potters from around the world. Intact examples of these historic functional forms have become coveted objects sought after by collectors and museums around the world. I hope you enjoyed this brief introduction to English slipware, and I would like to thank the Visionary Society and all the members of the museum for making Objectively Speaking possible. Thank you.